All right. What is up, guys? Zyvan from BrainyBiz.com. And uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed uh, I've been away for a while. I haven't done many videos. And uh, not to make any excuses, but the reason for that is, if you remember last year, we had um, our shed caught fire. And in there was our uh, lawn tractor, all our tools and stuff like that. So now that the weather is becoming nice again here, I decided to build a new shed. Uh, this one is going to be a 12 by 16. As you can see here, we're already started doing the floorboards and stuff like that. So that's coming along nicely. I uh, got doors uh, bought, uh, windows. And also, since I lost the tractor, I bought a new toy this year. Got a good deal on it. Uh, here it is. It's a Toro Time Cutter 54 inch. And I was skeptical at the beginning. Never had one of those. Always had the typical, you know, driving tractor and stuff. Um, I actually used this guy once. Uh, already and what used to take me like an hour and a half to do the lawn here uh, with this guy took me 40 minutes uh, that's awesome I mean I never thought it would be that much faster uh, but it actually is uh, so I'm very happy about that so I'm trying to finish the shed to put this guy in there uh, so that's what I've been up to it takes a lot of time uh, you know there's a lot of cleanup to do in the spring and stuff like that so hopefully you guys understand um, I wanted to do a quick video today and uh, let me switch here uh, so basically, we've been doing a lot of projects using uh, stepper motors in the past, uh, but we never looked at a way to actually home the uh, stepper at the beginning so it knows its position. Because, uh, you know, if you remove the power from a system like this, uh, the Uno has no way of knowing where the uh, position of the stepper is when you restart, the, when you plug it back in. Um, I mean, you could write uh, the position to an EEPROM, which it, the UNO has on board. We might look at uh, doing that. Uh, but most systems use some sort of uh, limit switch, like I have here. So it's a standard switch with a little lever here, as you can see. So basically, the way I did this, uh, did this uh, very fast, I used the uh, heavy-duty tie right there. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. So it's wrapped around the shaft very, very tight and it's very, uh, pretty rigid. So, uh, so basically the way this is gonna work, when we start it up, it's gonna start rotating towards the switch, and when this, press this presses the switch, it's gonna back off it, and then that's gonna be our home position. So I got a joystick here so I can jog after that uh, process is done. Uh, so this is a question that's come up uh, quite often. And the last person to ask uh, was, I, I believe his name was Paul. And uh, hopefully, Paul, this um, helps you uh, understand how to home a stepper motor at startup uh, using uh, an Arduino. Um, so as always, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to cut here. We're going to look at the code. Code's very simple. Um, in this this is going to be like a two-part. In this first part, I'm not using any libraries to move the motor. Uh, but in the next video, I'm going to use the very popular Excel stepper library and show you how to do the same thing, but using the library instead of doing it uh, by hand. Uh, so that's it. So let's cut here. Let's go look at the code. And then we'll be back and test it out. So let's go check that out. All right, so here's the code we're going to use today. Um, we're going to start at the top. We're defining all the pins that we need. This is for the easy driver. This one is for the joystick. And this one is our limit switch, which is going to be used as an ohm switch. Uh, then we have one variable we're going to use. It's called steps, and that is going to save the position of the stepper once we've done our homing procedure, which is going to be right here in the setup. Uh, in the setup, we have our uh, pin mode for output, input, and our limit switch is using input pull-ups, uh, re uh, resistors that are inside the UNO. And then we'll wake up the easy driver. Uh, then we configure the type of steps that we want to take with the easy driver. You have four uh, options, full, half, quarter, eight. And uh, as you go down here, the stepper is going to be a little bit slower, but a lot uh, more precise. So for this one, I'm using high, low, which equals to half steps. And that's the pin MS1 and MS2 on the easy driver. And here's our homing procedure. It's in the setup, so it's going to be executed before anything that's in the main loop. And that's what we want right from startup. We want to start homing. Uh, so the first while loop checks. Uh, well, the first while loop will actually get executed as long as the switch is not activated. So what it does, it actually moves the stepper anti-clockwise. So the uh, little tie wrap that we have at one point will hit the switch and activate it. And when it does, it'll break out of this loop and go into this one. And this one checks the opposite. It wants to, it will get executed as long as the switch is activated. So it will move 
clockwise the stepper until the switch gets gets basically not activated and then it breaks out of this and then we could say well now we're at our home position and steps variable is equal to zero zero representing our home position and then we move to a main loop main loop only enables me to actually move the x-axis of the joystick left or right so left is anti-clockwise and right is clockwise if I move to the left, meaning go anti-clockwise, I want to make sure I don't go under zero, which is our own position. And that's why this HIF statement is here. So this will move the motor anti-clockwise as long as the steps variable is greater than zero. And each time it moves a step or half a step or whatever you uh, configured, it will um, reduce steps variable by one by doing this here, minus, minus. Uh, the other while does the uh, opposite thing. If I move to the right, that means rotate the uh, stepper clockwise as long as it's not over 650 steps. And 650, you'll see in the testing, it's because as I rotate uh, the stepper, the uh, little uh, tie wrap might hit the switch on the underside. So 650, I tested it out, will be the maximum I can go before I hit the switch or crash. Uh, and we do plus plus on this one. Uh, so there you go. That's the code we're going to use. So let me upload this to the Uno and let's go back and test it out. All right. Welcome back. So we had a look at the code. Uh, now we're going to see how it works. Uh, the easy driver is already get, getting power. The Uno is not. So I can adjust the shaft here and you can see the uh, tie uh, that's going to hit the switch right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug in the Uno and the procedure in the setup to do the homing should start. There we go. Moving click back off and there you go now I can move this stepper all the way until I hit the maximum steps that we put in the code and that would not hit this switch right there so if I go back it's going back to the same exact place now I'm gonna reset the Uno so it's restarts the procedure it's like plugging back in well, there we go reset going back slowly clicking and backing off and again I can move now what I'm going to do quick, I'm going to remove power to the Uno, and now I'm going to move the shaft of the stepper that it hits the switch. There we go. It's clicking the switch right now. So if I plug it in, it's going to detect that right away and just back off the switch. So let's do that. There you go. It backed off, and I still have control. So there you go, quick uh, way, but uh, most of the time, uh, many systems that use a stepper will have a limit switch like this that will be used to uh, home uh, the uh, steppers at startup. Uh, you could do it, uh, there's many ways to do it in a way that it's more the placement of the switch that will uh, differ. Uh, if you're using a carriage on uh, tracks or um, a screw, then the limit switch uh, could be on one side and when the carriage gets close, it would click that switch. Uh, the, the principle is the same, it's just the placement of the switch will uh, be different. Uh, like I was saying, this is the first part because I'm not using any libraries in this one. Uh, the next video is going to be the same exact thing, except I'm going to use the Excel stepper library because uh, that's a library that a lot of people uses and um, the coding is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so hopefully this helps. I mean, um, it's nothing fancy, but it's something that you need if you're using steppers so you don't crash your uh, project. Uh, limit switch are important, especially if you're using uh, very powerful uh, stepper motors. Uh, so there you go, guys. Quick video. Uh, sorry for you. Again, sorry for the lack of videos lately, uh, but, you know, got stuff to do and uh, around the house. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us Twitter, Facebook and all that stuff so you can get notified when we post new, uh, new videos. Uh, so that'll do it for today, guys. Uh, once again, my name is Ivan and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.